This video is sponsored by established titles. It's tabletop time. I'm Dave, and today we're going to be building an Acastus Knight Pofferon. Por Porphyron. Something like that. This is the biggest and most expensive knight on Forge World's website, and that Games Workshop have ever produced. And we were super lucky that one of our fans, Randy on Instagram, reached out and said that they had won one of these knights and was offering to send it to us to build on the channel. So, with that spirit in mind, we wanted to grab this knight, build it, and actually create the People's Knight. So, in this video, not only am I going to build the knight, but we're also going to go through the law of night porphyrons, as well as let you know all the ways you can get involved in becoming part of this paint scheme of the people's night. So let's get down to business and start building this night. So the first thing to do when getting any models from Forge World is of course, remove all those nasty sprue gates. And here we run into the numerous usual problems with these expensive Forge World kits, which is mold slipping as well as overpours and some divots. This model was pretty good as I find most Forge World kits that have a large number of small parts are usually the best Forge World kits to build and the easiest to put together. I think the larger the pieces, the bigger the risk of warping and the harder it is to fix said warping. On this particular model of note, were a couple of pretty annoying slips on the Magna Last cannons. To clean these up, you have to pretty aggressively file or cut down the seam line until you get it at an angle that it blends between the two different areas. I actually got Murray to help me with this part to speed it up and he was a trooper helping me cut out some pieces and also wash them all up. With the Assembling done, the models scraped clean and ready to wash. We just bathed them in some warm soapy water and then gave them all a scrub. And this is to remove any oily mold release agent that might be left on the model as this will cause issues when trying to paint it later. Now with all the pieces clean and dry, we're ready to assemble the kit. The first thing I typically do with these large mech kits is I find a pose for the legs. Now I knew the Knight Porphyrion did not have a base. It actually just stands freely on the table in much the same way as the larger Titans. So with this in mind, I didn't want to do too drastic a pose with the feet. However, I wasn't that impressed with the stock standard poses suggested on the Forge World website. So instead went for a pretty confident forward stride, posing the left leg forward and the right leg back a little bit and lifting. With the feet and legs positioned, I moved on to probably my only complaint with the kit. The instructions were a little bit obtuse as to exactly how many of which component you should use with these pistons. So I accidentally glued the wrong pistons in the wrong places. And with super glue, I'm not getting those pistons back. Thankfully, the difference is pretty much just in the attachment points for the armor panels and with a bit of glue and different positioning, it's pretty easy to glue any panel onto any side. So this ultimately won't be a problem, but it was the only confusion in the kit. Over this kit, there's a lot of small pistons and hydraulics, which you actually glue part in, but don't glue the piston drive. This is really great as it allows you to adjust the leg pose. And these dynamic pieces actually uh, kind of squash and squeeze to fit whatever pose you choose. Now with the legs glued in place with the assistance of Jan just helping me pose that and keep that grounded while I glued the second foot down, I just did a test fit of the front armor panel. I'm really glad I did because I determined that without some bending to the piston, I would be completely unable to place the front shin guard on the model in this new pose. With resin, this was a very easy fix, however, as I just gave the piston a bit of a hot water bath and bent it slightly to adjust its angle. With this done, the armor panel would fit perfectly and I was ready to continue gluing on the toes to the knight. With the legs in place, the final touches on them was the pistons and cables that hang under the crotch region. Now you'll notice that I have left the armor panels off and I will be doing this for the entire knight kit. They've been washed and cleaned up, but for efficient painting, I think it'll be a lot easier to paint this in sub assemblies and with the mechanical frame underneath and the armor panels separate. Yes, I'm doing everything I can, but construction just isn't happening fast enough. People aren't taking you seriously. There's not much I can do about it. What's this? Lord Kiranon Nexorus? Did you know there is a hereditary Scottish tradition of calling landowners lords or ladies? Which means if you buy a parcel of land protecting Scottish Woodland Reserve and getting trees planted across the globe, you can become a lord or lady. Every time you order a title with established titles, they work with their charity partners, such as One Tree Planted or Trees for the Future, in a global effort to help restore the forests of the world. This is actually a real thing. You could officially include 
include your title, Lord or Lady, on something like your credit card, maybe even your dating profile. The first 200 people purchasing a title pack using the link in our description will be within walking distance of our night's plot. If you ever wanted a certificate that came with a titan, why not have a better certificate that you can get for your knight that makes it a lord? If you head to EstablishedTitles.com using the link in our description, they are running an early Black Friday sale, but you'll also get an additional 10% off using our code on screen. It's a really fun gift with a good message behind it. And if you're like me and you like poking fun at the establishment, what a great way of doing it. I know Rob is. Yeah, Rob told me he's already a lord. I'm going to have to start treating him differently around here now, or I could become my own lord. I've been really enjoying diving into the worlds of Warhammer 40k history with you all and this was another really good opportunity to do it. I wanted to take a look at knights and specifically the history of the knight Acastus Porphyrion. Someone's gonna let me know how to pronounce that in the comments. But to look at the history of the knight Porphyrion we need to look back at the history of knights themselves and they came about in the year 1990. First released in White Dwarf 126 Imperial Knights splashed their way into the universes of Warhammer 40k by way of epic Space Marine. Now, I know most of this has been sort of overwritten or deemed non-canon, but if you haven't heard all this before, I, I really, really want to share it with you because it is bonkers. Imperial Knights, according to 1990, started off because they copied Eldar Knights. So the story of Imperial Knights circa 1990 begins with the story of the Eldar, and of course the fall of the Eldar Empire. Prior to the fall, a whole bunch of Eldar who'd seeded these beautiful worlds and called them Maiden Worlds fled them and colonized them. Their new rustic lifestyle and difficult ways of life ended up sparing most of them from the horrifying fall of the Eldar and birth of Slaanesh. These Exodites, as they became known, populated their Maiden Worlds and created walkers known as Eldar Knights for the specific purpose are you ready for it? Of ranching dinosaurs. The dinosaurs they farmed in question were specifically bred creatures known as megasaurs. I'm not making this up. This is 40k Lord. This is Imperial Knights. Now at this stage, there were three model kits and they were broadly separated into Knights Paladins, Lancers and Castellans. Now you won't see any mention of a Knight Acastus Porphyrion here. We might have to go a few more years into the future before we see anything like that. Moving on to the torso, I did a couple of dry test fits before going on to grab the central pieces. You build the throne mechanicum and then you actually outlay the outer panels around that central piece. I have no intention on painting the inside of the throne mechanicum, so I glued it all together, assuming I'd be gluing the lid on top and completely ignoring this for all eternity. For those who do paint their cockpits and interiors, more power to you, but honestly, on these nights, no one's ever really going to see them. The hatch to look in is so small, and unlike the Warhound Titan, it is not a simple pop on, pop off to have a look at the mechanics underneath. Plus, we don't have a pilot for it, so it's pretty uninteresting to open the top canopy and see an empty chair. Now, while the instructions sort of tell you to do this as a piece by piece build, I found while doing it pretty rapidly that the best thing to do was to put glue on all of the objects and kind of press fit them all in together. This way ensured that they all fit and and I didn't have to deal with awkward angles as all of the resin on all of these components was just slightly warped. However, by gluing them together as one part, they actually fit together very nicely and I won't have any problems later on down the line. Perhaps I spoke too soon though, as the top canopy fit on perfectly as I just push fit this in. Everything was going fine until I had a look at putting on that bottom panel that attaches to the legs. This just didn't fit and I needed to get the knife out and trim down a few little resin tabs that were in the way. Once these were cleaned off however the bottom plate fit in perfectly and altogether the upper torso of the model was looking pretty fine. With the test fit complete, I glued on the shoulder mounts that would later mount the last cannons for our model. As I figure when you're spending 600 plus points on a knight, you may as well bling it out with some more anti-tank. After this was done, I set about working on that carapace plate on the top, choosing to go with the Iron Storm rocket pod rather than the Helios missiles. I don't see aircraft that often on the tables, and if I did, I would probably use something else to deal with them. I want this knight to be a complete conqueror of the ground, and this missile pod will really help it deal with some infantry. I really like the way this attaches to the top and you can assemble it with this close. However, there was absolutely no way I was doing that. It just looks too cool, open and ready to launch. 
With the pistons in place, I glued on the engine exhausts on the back of the carapace, and then the final step for the carapace was to glue on the handrails. These handrails had originally come with plenty of resin holding them together by design. I believe it was called a shim. And once I cleaned all of that off with a knife, it was really easy to glue these on. With these glued in place, the torso and carapace was finished. With the release of the box Epic Titan Legions and then several follow-up articles in the early months of 95, Imperial Knights were back. They had not been mentioned once in the intervening years, so players were excited to get a whole bunch of multi-part knights in the Epic Titan Legion starter box. Here with these kits, we see the Warden Knight has been replaced with the Castellan Knight, but Paladins and Lancers remain favorites. Now, interestingly, in this era, we also see knights starting to look a lot more like knights do now. And while the people at Forge Order Games Workshop clearly have gone back to all their source material for inspiration, it's this iteration around 1990 that shares the most in common. I actually think it's the Knight Castellan and the Knight Crusader that ultimately bear the closest resemblance to the Knight Perfurion. As well as that, the Knight Crusader and Castellan were, at the time their law was written, said to be the heaviest and slowest types of knights produced by the Mechanicum. Due to this, they were considered to be less desirable as pilots would miss out on the untold glory that can be claimed through noble hand-to-hand -hand combat. Also, their incredibly broad chassis and focus on two shoulder-mounted guns without real arms makes it look by far the closest to the current Knight Perfurion. So with what I think the clearest inspiration of its time released, what would that mean for knights? Well, it meant nothing because knights went on ice for the next 20 years. And it in fact wasn't until 2014 when knights would be brought back in 40K in all their massive plastic glory. And they'd be followed up by years of releases, including the Knight Perfurion. But we'll get to that in a few minutes. As soon as we got sent this night from Randy, we at Table to Time really wanted to make it a big thank you to the community that support us and enjoy our videos. So here's the pitch for the People's Night. We're going to paint up this night in honor of all our biggest supporters. And that's you, the viewers, as well as our patrons. And there's a few ways we're going to do this. First of all, Randy and our king tier patrons, our top tier patrons, are all going to receive grand honors on the night. That is, pilots that have previously piloted and their names featured prominently on the prow of this mighty beast. And any of our commander tier patrons are going to get their names on a scroll of honor on the knight himself. All our patrons are going to be able to vote on a mural that we're going to paint on it. And you, the viewers, we're going to get you to pick the color scheme. Knights typically have three colors and we're going to reserve the right to pick which color is what. But we need a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary color. I'd love to see you all work together to come up with the best three color combination to make the cool unique night out there. I'm going to attempt a mural as well. The top voted idea for an image from the universe of Warhammer 40k, I will attempt to freehand to some degree of success on one of the panels on this night. I hope you're excited for this project. We certainly are. It's a huge, amazing model and I can't wait to paint it. Thank you for taking part and please chuck your comments down below. You are all the best and let's get back to it. It was time for the finishing touches of the model and that meant gluing on those nipple last cannons. With these glued on, I could move on to the arms with the magna last cannons. First, you glue in the arm mount into the central gun. And at this stage, I was very careful not to mix them up and to make sure I had two guns facing in two different directions. From there, you glue on the mount that will later have the decorative shoulder armor panel glued on top of it. With these two components together, the back generator mechanism is glued on. Now this can glue on either way, so you've got to be really careful to make sure you glue it on the correct way, otherwise your arm guns are going to be all kinds of screwed up. With the back in place, I glued the Magna Lass cannons on and used a little bit of hot water just to try and coax them into a, an exactly aligned position rather than bending slightly towards each other. With the guns glued on, you attach a sight to the side of the weapon, and this also acts as a mount for an armor panel later. Then towards the back, there are six cables you attach on the sides, as well as a couple underslung underneath. 
Enter to the stage the Acastus Porphyrion, the kit I have been building today. This is by far and away the largest night kit Forge World or Games Workshop produces and the one with the heftiest price tag. In Australia, they are running in at a whopping 860 odd dollars. The Knight Porphyrion is the largest, slowest, most deadly with ranged weapons. The Acastus Knight Porphyrion is the rarest and most difficult to manufacture and produce knight that the Forge Worlds of the Mechanicum can still manufacture today. Considered exceptionally rare even at the height of the Horus Heresy, they are a technological marvel. While they are venerated as being rare and difficult to replace, their huge, lumbering and slow chassis makes them less maneuverable and less nimble. They also eschew close combat weapons, favoring ranged weapons in a fire support role. Often resigned to wardens of houses whose age has made them less nimble and able to react, who can then move into a heavy fire support role while commanding over a banner of knights. To me, that sounds pretty familiar. I don't know about you, but uh, sounds like a Knight Castellan from 1995. There's also a really interesting bit of lore here as their use as basically the executioners of Knight households. They kind of have a bit of a stain on their honor and many Knight households actually see them as an omen of bad luck and not a vehicle you would want to pilot. Despite this mild contradiction in terms of their popularity with the Mechanicum and the household Seneschals, and the knightly orders themselves, their extreme rarity and power makes them a necessity on the battlefield that no knight household, no matter how much they disdain them, would refuse to use. It seems that the Knight Perfurion, while inspired by some of the early kits, maybe more directly than the name would let on, is in fact a new invention. The exact pattern never existed before, the shape and design are fairly new, and altogether, while I don't love that it's as big as my glorious god engines of the Titanicus, I do think it's very cool. Uh, in fact, probably one of the coolest nights I've ever seen. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you are keen to see the paint job in just a few weeks and I would love to see your contributions down in the comments below. Us producing two videos a week would be impossible without the support of our lovely patrons. Thank you so much to all of you for all your support and kindness and your genuinely amazing attitudes towards the hobby that you share in our patron exclusive discord. Joining the gang, we have some new patrons, Joe Von Seelen, Matthew Delafontaine, Lament the Vich, Lufras and Joshua. Thank you all for your support. I'd love it if you could go on down, join the Discord and say hello and check out our Patreon videos. We put one out every week. Thank you once again to our sponsor, Established Titles, for making our knight a lord. All right, that was super cool to build. And remember to chuck some comments down below as the top two most liked comments will be the primary and secondary color of our knight. And I cannot wait to write the patrons in the scroll of honors on the knight's sides or legs or shoulders or wherever we can fit them all. A final thank you to Randy for reaching out and sending us this night. It was super cool and there's no way we would have been able to do a video like this without your help. So thank you very much. Go give him a like on Instagram and look at his cool Lord of the Rings models. Make sure you click like and subscribe and in the next couple of weeks, we'll be painting up and posting up the second part to this night puffer on journey. Thank you all final thanks and all that because I don't know what else to say and I got to leave this video and it's it's just easier to be awkward when there's other people to bounce off. But um, it's been fun. So, you know.